One of the most profound questions humanity has ever pondered is, where did all of this come from? The notion that we may discover solutions by studying the universe itself was exotic until recently, when scientific measures started to address the difficulties that had stumped philosophers, theologians and intellectuals alike. The 20th century saw the development of quantum physics, general relativity and the Big Bang, all followed by remarkable observational and experimental accomplishments. These frameworks allowed us to generate theoretical predictions. The Big Bang it left some unanswered questions, necessitating further investigation. Astronomers are currently using the James Webb Space Telescope to go back to the beginnings of the cosmos, and they discovered emptiness in the extremely early universe. Our understanding of the universe was irreversibly altered in the 1920s, when two sets of data coincided perfectly. Scientists headed by Vesto Slipher had been measuring spectral lines emission and absorption properties of various stars and nebulae for a few years. Because atoms are pretty much the same everywhere in the universe, their electrons undergo the same transitions, resulting in the same absorption and emission spectra. However, a few of these nebulae, mainly the spirals and ellipticals, had extremely large red shifts corresponding to fast recession speeds, faster than anything else in our galaxy. Edwin Hubble and Milton Humerson started measuring individual stars in these nebulae in 1923, establishing their distances to them. They were millions of light years beyond our own Milky Way in most cases. When the distance and redshift data were combined, it all led to one unavoidable conclusion, which was also mathematically confirmed by Einstein's general theory of relativity. The universe was expanding. The greater the distance between us and a galaxy, the quicker it seems to recede from us. This fantastic and mind-boggling fact allows us to extrapolate what will happen to the universe as time marches on inexorably forward. The expansion of the cosmos causes galaxies to withdraw from one another with more distant objects moving away faster. The wavelength of light is therefore stretched towards the more extended, redder frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is referred to as red shift. Red shift is a critical tool for astronomers. It reveals intriguing physics about light and the composition of many celestial objects. You may learn more about it here. The further away the galaxy, the farther back in time, the more its previously visible light has been pushed down to near-infrared or even infrared. This is why the JWST observes the cosmos at infrared and near-infrared wavelengths. It is the best technique to see extremely early and distant galaxies. However, the same physical laws that tell us what will happen in the future can also unfold past occurrences, and the universe is no exception. If the universe is cooling, expanding, and becoming less dense now, it would say it was once smaller, hotter, and denser. With the rise of the James Webb Space Telescope, it has been providing spectacular photos of the cosmos since it began giving its initial data in July 2022, including studies of the most distant and early galaxies we've ever seen. The JWST views the cosmos in infrared light, which the human eye cannot see and can detect dim light from old stars and galaxies. The observatory can literally view back in time up to around 13.5 billion years by staring into the distant cosmos. Scientists are slowly gathering the broken pieces of their greatest mystery. But how can scientists be so confident that the galaxies they see are so far away from such a young epoch in cosmic history? Indeed, because the distance in space is challenging to measure, these galaxies could be closer and thus more recent. Astronomers may use a few methods to validate their distance and time measurements even for galaxies on the farthest limits of our cosmic horizon. Now, here's the thing. The fact that light does not travel instantly creates a relationship between time and distance in space. Instead, light in a vacuum travels at a constant speed. That means that whatever we see, no matter how close, was seen at some points in the past. The gap in time between the light leaving and arriving at our eyes is insignificant. When considering things in space, the travel time of light only begins to have a meaningful effect. The Sun, Earth's most prevalent light source, is the most obvious way to think about this. The Sun is around 93 million miles or 8.33 light minutes from Earth, so we always view it as if it was approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds ago. Earth would not get black for around 8 minutes if the Sun abruptly went out. Incredible, right? When we start looking out into the universe with powerful instruments like the Hubble Space Telescope, ALMA, and the JWST, 
the travel time of light becomes extremely important. Hubble allows us to see it 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. A lot may happen to this light as it travels across the cosmos for billions of years, and these effects are critical in determining the age and distance of these things. When ALMA examined the spectra of a distant galaxy, astronomers discovered OIII at a longer wavelength, 1160 micrometers, indicating that it had been redshifted. This technique of determining cosmos distances is calibrated using spectroscopy, exposing information about these early galaxies. Spectroscopy exploits that various chemical elements emit and absorb light at different wavelengths. This implies that light from faraway galaxies and stars have the fingerprint of the components that make them up. Scientists equate what they perceive in the cosmos to the wavelength of light that an element like oxygen releases and absorbs in a lab here on Earth. On Earth, for example, oxygen generates a characteristic in light termed OIII at a wavelength of 88 micrometers. The chemical fingerprints of distant galaxies may be used to validate the period during which galaxies are seen in another manner. The JWST also discovered the universe's first known black hole. Scientists believe many earlier ones might have crowded the primordial cosmos. The supermassive black hole with a mass 10 million times that of the Sun was found in the heart of a young galaxy 570 million years after the first started by the JWST, whose powerful cameras enabled it to see back in time to the earliest phases of the cosmos. The cosmic monster might be one of the numerous black holes that gorged themselves to ever larger proportions during the cosmic dawn, which began approximately 100 million years after the Big Bang and lasted a billion years. Astronomers don't know why there were so many of these black holes or how they grew so massive. Black holes are formed by the collapse of massive stars and expand indefinitely by feasting on gas, dust, stars and other black holes. Friction leads the material spiraling towards the gluttonous space-time ruptures to heat up. They generate lights that telescopes can observe, transforming them into so-called active galactic nuclei. It's unclear how black holes appeared so abruptly over our early cosmos. According to some hypotheses, astronomers are still looking for much younger, speculated primordial black holes that formed shortly after or possibly before the Big Bang. However, they have remained elusive thus far. Although there are two leading theories for how so many black holes formed so quickly after the Big Bang, they are the remains of giant stars that formed much faster than the ones we know today. Or they are billowing clouds of incredibly dense gas that collapsed suddenly to form the all-consuming singularities in space-time. The early cosmos was a sea of hydrogen and helium, with just a sprinkling of heavier elements known as metals, such as oxygen and nitrogen. These early stars in the earliest galaxies were metal-poor because there weren't many heavy atoms to integrate. The early stars used nuclear fusion to convert hydrogen to helium, then helium to heavier elements. When this atomic fuel ran out, they could no longer hold themselves against the inward push of gravity. The cause of these stars collapsed, resulting in substantial supernova explosions that disseminated the created heavy metals across their host galaxies. The leftovers of these stars were the building blocks for the following generation of stars, which were richer in metals than the previous generation. The process continues today, producing more metal-rich stars and galaxies each generation. This implies that astronomers will continually examine the spectra of light from a galaxy to determine how plentiful in heavy elements it is, and hence estimate the age of the cosmos at which it is viewed. If it is devoid of metals, it is most likely a galaxy from the early cosmos. As Webb looks deeper into space, we can expect to learn more about the origins of our universe and eventually ourselves. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.